In post-production, color grading is quite important. However, sometimes you just don't want to do any of that fancy stuff. You just want to cycle through certain looks to give a bit of interest to your images. Now you can do that, obviously, with a plugin, but why spend the money when you have everything in Photoshop already built in that you can do that with, right? So <laughs> let's just jump into it. So I have an image here from Unsplash. Actually, thank you, Matthew Henry, if you're watching. Uh, if you're not, then thank you as well, uh, whatever. So <laughs> here is what we are going to do. Let's just create a new adjustment layer, which is going to be a gradient map. Now, if you click on this gradient strip and you pull up the gradient editor, uh, we can see how that works. If you're not familiar with the gradient map, it's quite simple. The left side, the left color stop, is going to determine the black colors. The right color stop is going to determine the white colors. So right now, the blacks are black and the whites are white. And anything in between is just resolved by the gradient itself. So, if I were to change the white into something else, you can see that that changed the, the absolute white into this absolute red that I chose. And the gradient itself is going to resolve the in-between colors until it gets to my other set color, which is black right now. But if I were to choose something else, let's say this green, then this is what it would do. However, this is not really a color grading in itself. I mean, it is, but it's not something that you would use on your images. So let's do something more reasonable. So if I select the black point, which is the black color stop, which is the, um, the left most um, color stop that I have right now, I'm going to click on the color and choose something that I would basically choose. Let's go with something familiar to everyone, like a dark cyan look. And with the white, which is the right side, let's go with, well, you guessed it, with something orange. So I want something bright, but still saturated orange here. Let's go with OK. And here's also what I like to do. If you click under the gradient strip, you can create new uh, handles or color stops. And I like to do one in the middle, which would rep represent the uh, midtones. And you can tint that any way you like. You can go in here and, and be like, let's do with the blue or anything like that. But for this demonstration, I want to put that on 50% gray, just so that it gives us a neutral mid-tone, a neutral midpoint in, uh, in this, at the center of the gradients. OK, let's hit OK, and let's close this one as well. And now with the gradient map, we kind of had, have a grade already, right? Well, we lost detail and it just looks like it's, you know, painted or drawn or something like that, which is okay if that's what you wanted to achieve, but for this, we didn't want to do that. So here's what we do. You go into the blending mode and you switch it to color. Now with that, you can see that we have all the tonal values back in our images, but we also have this nice gradient, this nice grayed, that we actually applied with the gradient map adjustment layer, right? Okay, I think it's a bit too harsh because it's, it's you know, it, it's like a filter, but it's still, we have like nice sunshiny, uh, simplistic cinematic look, but I would lower it down to at least 50%. Now, if I had a, you know, human subject in the image, then I would probably lower it even, even lower. I would go lower with the opac opacity because it would look, you know, too weird. But sometimes it works. But the nice, nice thing about this is that you can just go up and down with the opacity and nothing will happen because uh, uh, this is non-destructive. So nothing will happen in terms of that will not mess up your image. Okay. However, this is not enough because I promised you that I'm going to show you something that will help you cycle through looks, right? And this is not exactly cycling through if you just go in and change colors because that's, you know, choosing colors. You, you could do that probably. So let's just go back into the gradient editor and let's do the following. Where you see gradient type, let's just switch from solid to noise. Now, what noise gradient type does is basically gives you random colors um, and the amount is based on the roughness. So I want 
like 10 or 15 or 20 percent or even lower than those but let's just go with 10 right now as you can see that kind of gives you almost like two colors on this gradient or maybe three i mean i think there are more but it's not really visible so let's just not care about that and with that i also sometimes like to switch the color model to let's say lab or hsp but let's go with lab right now and even now you can see that we have in the white areas or the bright areas this orange color and in the blacks some sort of a purple so this is already quite pleasing isn't it but here is the cycle through part that i actually promised so if you click on the randomize button here that is going to randomize the colors that you have on your gradient now sometimes that's just going to give you almost like a monochromatic look sometimes that gives you something harsher and sometimes that gives you something really interesting or something that you can't even use but this is good for uh, you know sitting down and you're like well i don't know what to do with this image i just want to give some sort of a interest to this so let's just cycle through and find something that we like um hopefully it will not take too much time but i actually like this one so if you like something you hit okay you exit and there you go now i think this is a bit too harsh so i'm just going to lower it down to something like 21 percent. why not and let's just look at the before and after so this is the after and this is the before this is the after the before so as you can see with this very very simple trick you can just double click again and go into the gradient editor and hit randomize once again a couple of times if you need or you know sometimes a hundred times but you can just you know try to find something that you like you don't have to go into color theory you don't have to know color harmonies you can just go with something you like and it will look good because you know you like it and that's that's really important when it comes to personal photographs so i i've yet to find something that i like i mean new one that i actually like but i'm going to go with this so in case you wanted to know more more about color grading and color theory i actually have a class on calby1.com about uh, i think it's it's a more in-depth look into color grading with curves with how colors work color spaces and all of those you know quite complex situations so if you want to check that out i put the link into the description so check that out and i hope with this video i could actually help you and you can just start developing your own colors from now on and until next time see you